Hi, I'm Chris Schweitzer, and I'm about to undertake a new project, or at least I believe that I'm about to undertake a new project. It's at the very early stages, and it's because of its uh, early staging at this point that I wanted to start a production journal, a video production journal, uh, in which I document this project from its onset up until uh, when it's finished and possibly beyond. Um, I think we, we being cartoonists, my, myself included, uh, share a lot of process work. You know, we share uh, pencils, we share thumbnails, we share coloring things. You know, we talk about aspects of this as it comes along. Uh, but I usually do this late in the game. I don't. I don't document the the pre physical work stages, um, and I thought it might be worthwhile to do so. Uh, if you are uh, a reader of my comics or other people's comics, uh, it may be interesting to see how this kind of thing plays out. If you are a fellow creator, it may be helpful for you to see how the sausage is made, and. It's something that I think would be worthwhile. Um, also, hopefully, get me a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm, I'm uh, reluctant to share things that aren't successful and to share things that have a prospect of failure uh, because I don't want to be seen in that light. Uh, and so it's not the easiest thing for me to share things that I'm working on. Um, until they are far enough along that it seems likely that they're going to reach audiences. So, that's what I'm going to be doing here. So, to give you a little bit of background about this, um, uh, for this, you know, first installment of this production journal, I really, I'm a big historical buff. Uh, I like narratives set in the past, um, especially ones that I think can highlight the two things that I love most about historical periods. One, and probably the more important one in terms of reaching an audience, is how the story showcases the issues and human condition of today through the lens of the past. The other is to differentiate between ourselves in the past, to show how insanely different things have been. Um, and uh, when those two are offered to an audience concurrently, I think it can have really powerful results um, and really entertaining results, really educational results. Um, it's something that I like to try and tackle in my own work, and it's something I definitely love reading in other people's work. Now, there are... A lot of historical genres, um, and a lot of historical genres specific to the United States. You know, discounting uh, military stories in which uh, are affiliated with specific wars with which we've been involved. Uh, we still have some historical genres that are... Uh, codified and specific and more than that have have deviated to some degree from the strict historical to become a kind of mythology and uh, two that immediately spring to mind are prohibition era crime stories and westerns and in both of these we have attached to these stories an iconography, um, a structure, and what's wonderful about them is that they are our mythology. They are as much a part of American culture and folklore as King Arthur or Robin Hood is to England or uh, Journey to the West is to China. These these are stories that that we see ourselves reflected in. And more than that, they are stories that do more to tell about the era in which they're made than they tell about the period that they are purporting to depict. So 
Um, Westerns especially. Uh, Westerns from the 50s are about the 1950s. Westerns from the 70s are about the 70s. Uh, Westerns from the 90s are about the 90s. Um, And I think that there's something really exciting and powerful about that, to see ourselves reflected and examined through the lens of how we interpret our past. Now, cowboys, as a general rule, or or sheriffs, or whoever the the story might be about, really didn't look anything like the cowboys of our popular imagination, Um, at least not until very late in the game. Um, Gunfights didn't really play out the way that we think of gunfights. Um, You know, all of these things are mythological elements that derive from period accounts, sensational period accounts that were meant to uh, excite and move units and get people enthusiastic about these characters in this period. And the same is true with those those uh, Prohibition era um, either bootleggers or mobsters or populist bank robbers or whatever it might be. Um, and a historical genre that is very, very similar to these other two is the five points. Um, the, the, the violent, poverty-stricken slum area of New York City in the mid-19th century. Um, because it, too, uh, the study of it as well, is is born of sensationalist newspaper accounts, very colorful characters, violent undertakings, and a sort of codified tribal system. Um, and the, the sort of Bible of this uh, genre is the uh, Herbert Asbury book, uh, The Gangs of New York, which was written in the early 1920s and is a sort of sensationalist accounting of the different tribal groups that were active in New York in the 19th century, um, uh, which includes uh, criminal gangs, river pirates, uh, union groups, political organizations, fire brigades, basically any organization to which people would attach themselves for survival or advancement. And this book, although, you know, likely deviating from, from history as we see it, or as we, as we think of it in modern terms, is quintessentially American in the way that it mythologizes its subjects. Um, and it lends itself really well to narratives. Um, there are any number of stories that could be pulled from this, um, any number of books that could be worked around a single anecdote. And this is, first off, it's easily the most entertaining, you know, nonfiction uh, book that I've ever read. And I've, I've read it multiple times and, and I always find new things that are fascinating in it, especially because it didn't really take place that long ago. And the, the sheer absurdity of some of the situations is so staggering that it, it boggles the mind to think that these kinds of things were, were happening. And even when they are exaggerated or, or colorized, you know, there's still a, a root of truth to many of them that, uh, when examined is still pretty shocking when you think about, you know, river pirates on the Hudson or whatever it might be attacking farms like Vikings, um, you know, the military being called in and using artillery to put down riots born of arguments over whether or not a British person can play, uh, Macbeth better than an American. Um, these, these kinds of things are, are really exciting and, and it's a genre that I really want to see examined. It's a genre that I want to see exploited. Um, I want to read and watch stories set in this period. And there are some that exist. Um, uh, most notably, probably the, the Scorsese movie, Gangs of New York, um, uh, the, which stars uh, DiCaprio, Daniel Day-Lewis, and Cameron Diaz. 
Um, there's also the television program Copper, uh, the novel Heyday, um, uh, Lindsay Fay's Timothy Wilde series, the uh, the Bowery Boys uh, webcomic. Um, there are a few, but there are, you know, there are as many over the years as there are, you know, Westerns produced in a one or two year period. Um, and that to me is really shocking considering how much great fodder there is here. So for some time, I've been really wanting to undertake a five points story or a five points project, I should say. Um, and I'm going to be walking you through how this project has been coming about and where it is likely headed. Um, so I'll do that over the next few days. I'm uh, finishing colors on uh, the third Creeps book, which is a, a, uh, a kid's horror series that I do. Um, and so that's going to be taking up a lot of my attention. I'm also traveling to Lexington Comic Con this weekend, um, which is uh, about three hours away. I'm traveling up with Kyle Starks, um, which I'm excited about. There are a number of people there uh, who I'm eager to see, fellow guests and uh, friends and other cartoonists. So Scotty Young will be there and uh, Andrew McLean and Rico Renzi, and it's going to be a grand old time. Uh, Benito Serino. So I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and I'm looking forward to continuing to ruminate on this uh, project. So, uh, which for now, I'll be calling Paradise Square, uh, which is the name of the park in the middle of the, the Five Points uh, during its uh, more colorful years. Um, so, uh, I hope that you will keep up with this. I'll be showing sketches and drawings as I go, um, talking about the different processes, talking about the business side of it, um, and seeing how it all plays out. Hopefully, it will amount to something. Um, I have confidence that it will, though. Actually, no, I don't. I don't have confidence that it will. I'm terrified that it won't. It's something that I really want to do, and I really hope that it's something that I can do, but that relies on a lot of external factors beyond my control. And I'll be walking you through some of those factors um, as I do them, because it is something that I think is worth sharing. So wish me luck. <laughs>